Hey you guys, so it is one month since the opening of Match and Play and I thought I would do kind of a little progress report for you guys and talk to you guys a little bit about, um, you know, the opening of Imagine Play and then also the things that I feel like we've been really successful at and maybe um, some of the things that we aren't as successful at and then a little bit of maybe a teaser of what we hope to accomplish in the next few months. Uh, so uh, let's talk a little bit about um, the getting of the space and the build out and everything like that. Um, as you know, I just did a video, I'll link it below, of how hard it was for us to find a space. And if you're looking for something to do something like this, and you might want to watch that video so that way you can kind of get an idea of the leasing of our commercial space and what we kind of had to deal with when we were leasing the space for Imagine Play. Um, so the build out, I think, took about six weeks. Um, the timeline was pretty accurate um, and our property manager actually handled the whole build out. Um, he had his own guys do it and um, so it was very successful and kind of easy um, for us so not stressful at all because they they do many properties um, all the time uh, so they kind of knew what they're doing and kind of the right questions to ask and everything like that so that made it very str stress free on us um, but obviously before the build out happened um, it took about two months for us to negotiate that lease um, and that was a really stressful process because you know we had to bring out a lot of money up front for the build out uh, and um, you know there was a lot of things that was scrutinized on our part um, and it was really hard for us to find this location so if there was if we didn't get this specific location there would have been no imagine play so um, we're really grateful that that we were even was able to find a spot um, even though it wasn't the location that we, we hoped for in the beginning okay um, so a lot of people have been asking or you probably want to know what the cost is for this because I always see moms post all the time that they want to build an indoor play, kids play area especially in Elk Grove because there wasn't one and you see like kind of these posts pops up like once a month or something like that even in the process of building Imagine Play I saw some posts of you know somebody that w wanted to do this as well um, and I don't think that if you're gonna get into this, you have to know the cost is really tremendous. You know, um, my husband doesn't like it when I talk about numbers. Um, as you know, and plus it's like a public forum, right? Um, so just to give you guys an idea, we're basically in the double digits in the thousand dollar ranges, and it's not the low double digits; it's the higher double digits. And we had to take out a loan, and we had to dig into our savings. So. Um, you know, it's gonna take several months to, for us to be able to recoup that cost back. So um, if you are looking to do something like this, just so you know, it is gonna cost quite a, a penny um, for you to just start one up. Uh, so just to give you an idea, we have a play castle that's in um, our play area and that cost us like $10,000. So imagine if you want to do a whole city, um, you know, times that by five, you know, if you want five buildings, you know, that's gonna cost you quite a bit. The flooring itself already cost us like $3,000 and that wasn't even the flooring that we wanted. We wanted the really nice, high-end, durable flooring, but at that time, you kinda just have to, you know, weigh your, your differences. Like, you know, do I really want the $10,000 flooring or, you know, can I live with a $3,000 flooring and then maybe in a year we can spruce it up then. So there was a lot of things that we kinda had to think about, you know, what's made, the, what's the best decision um, and budget-wise uh, and, that's what we came up with. We felt like the castle was more important, and so we we spent all most of our money on that, and um, then the, then the flooring, you know, and then of course then we have all the other pieces and components, and those things, um, you know, add up. And I don't think that people realize the cost of it when they're like trying to go into this, you know. And even after Imagine Play open, once we kind of got the build out, everything, and and our doors were open, you know, every single day, every single week, we're spending more money on play equipment, you know. For instance, like me going to the dollar store to get arts and crafts stuff, like I, I easily spend one hundred and fifty dollars at the dollar store every single time I go, and I go at least twice a week. So, imagine. <laughs> Like, how, who does that? Who spends that much money at the dollar store? But that, that I, I do, you know? So um, we buy lots of arts and crafts stuff from the dollar store, Joann's and things like that, you know, um, uh, because we want to keep up on the hourly activities and things like that. And so um, constantly every week we are building our supply up. And so eventually down the line, we hope that it will taper off or we have enough supplies where it's like, I'm not constantly going to the store all the time, but it's going to be a while until you get to that point because you just don't have that supply or inventory in yet. Um, and so, We'll just cross our fingers that hopefully in a few months then I'll be buying less and less toys um, and just keeping up on more regular maintenance. 
Okay. Um, so one of the things I felt like I, we did really, really well on is marketing our business. Um, what I did was I created a Facebook group months in advance before Imagine Play even opened. And that group really kept it so that way people that were interested in the group can keep up on the updates and keep up on our progress and made people excited about what we're doing. And now we're using it to kind of like, you know, tell people about our events, tell people about what we have going on every single day. Um, and just giving people expectations about, you know, what they can expect from us when every single day regarding our birthday parties regarding what we're doing as far as hourly events and stuff like that and makes parents excited and kids excited to come and visit us so um, what I really love about that it's basically kind of free advertising right um, because now that we're a new business and we're open our doors you know you get Yelp calling you you get um, all these different advertisers calling you wanting to um, wanting you to spend money with them and it's really hard when you're a new business you can't be spending $300 here and $400 here and $500 here it all adds up you need you know we have to try to keep as much money in our account as possible so that way we can do other things like pay our employees which that goes to my next point um, one of the, the challenges that I have personally is that I never had employees before I mean I own my own business before and um, I did photography for like seven years and I'm still doing it I'm at my studio right now I just I just got finished with a shoot um, but I didn't have any other employees before so that was just like a new thing for me where I had to learn you know how to train employees how to build an employee handbook how to do payroll you know and how to train your employees to be an extension of yourself that's I think that's the hard part because you know your employees are gonna have different personalities um, and the other thing I found really hard was interviewing people and um, trying to make the right decisions you know uh, you know s we found challenges where you know some of our employees left like really quite early um, maybe it wasn't for them some of them left for other reasons like they just didn't have babysitting or whatever you know and that's totally fine but like that caused one more stressor on us trying to find another employee and trying to get them hired and and, and trained in time you know for uh, opening doors and, and things like that so all those things kind of came into account um, as far as employees go and of course now minimum wage is higher and um, I, I mean that's great I really want to pay my employees well you know I want them to like their job and I feel like if you have a job you know they should care about it um, so we we definitely believe in that um, but because you know you have to pay your employees a little bit more um, that kind of adds on to your expenses you know you're gonna find that employees and and, and uh, their payroll is going to be like one of the number one expenses that you have and you have to make sure that you price according to that and I guess people just don't understand that I have to price according to um, what I'm paying my employees and um, the amount of people that I have so I can keep the place clean and running efficiently and we're not even looking to make a profit right now we're just like looking to make sure to break even so that way we're not paying any more money out of pocket you know um, so eventually down the line maybe we will make a profit and we will actually make back some of that money that we you know put into it um, but right now we just really want it to function correctly and just learn um, the business side of things so that way uh, things run smoothly every single day even if I'm not there uh, so the other challenges we ran into is regarding members you know we now have a very good amount of members um, and we love our members I love that I could to see the same people every single day and see their children and learn about them as a person learn about their families you know and I like learning you guys' names and stuff like that um, but one of the challenges of that is that um, you know it's making sure that you I guess meet their expectations every single day um, and uh, making sure you have a system so that we can check them in. And one of the things that was hard for us is we're not using a, a standard, um, I guess, uh, play area point of sale. Um, there are some out there, but you know, uh, at the end we figured, we found that the cost of it was just more than what we wanted to spend at the point of us starting. So we decided to go with a square point of sale. And with a square point of sale, I'm still learning a lot of things. I've used it for my photography business, but there are some areas in it that I did not know about. Um, so now I'm using like the areas where you can like enter fields for members and stuff like that. And that we didn't do that at the beginning. So now we're kind of backtracking and doing all that. So we learn new things every single day to kind of make our system a little bit more efficient um, so that becomes really hard one of the things that uh, was really hard on me was that um, I kind of priced some of the stuff at the at grand opening based on the feedback I was getting you know some people were saying well they didn't feel like they could afford like the VIP membership or the open play membership so I created this one special membership um, for just the people that were saying that they couldn't afford it and 
I swear, only one person bought it, and then that person ended up getting becoming a misunderstanding um, that they, she thought she bought another membership, but she got this op this grand opening membership where it only allowed her like two um, two visits a month, you know. So like things like that um, becomes a little bit of a stress on you, but also it made me realize that I can't price myself to make other people happy because those people, those small amount of people that are saying, I want it to be priced this way, I tried to accommodate them by doing that and it didn't work and all it did was just created a little bit more stress on us. Um, so, you know, that's just one of the things that you kind of have to, you know, think about as far as pricing goes. Um, a little bit more about pricing too, like right now we have a price per age um, and I'm finding that really, really difficult because, um, you know, we do understand that a, a, a kid that's a little bit older is going to take more away from our facility. So we price them a little bit more because they're going to use more art supplies. They're going to, you know, use more of our facility to the fullest. Um, but, you know, it, it becomes confusing for one. Um, and then two, I just feel like, you know, it needs to be simplified a little bit more, right? So now I've started thinking about, okay, there's some play places where they price per person, even they charge the adult. And I feel like now I definitely see why they do that because it makes it so simple that there's no age range, you know, because sometimes people come in, they're like, well, my 10 year old's not gonna play. My 10 year old's just gonna sit here. Why am I gonna be charged for them? But then when a place, for instance, that charges a per person, it really doesn't matter if they play or not. I'm charging for the adult. I'm charging for 11 year old. I'm charging for a 12 year old. It doesn't matter. So I feel like, going back to the simple pricing map uh, module of $8 a person or something like that could be really successful because you don't run into those challenges where you're having people say, well, they're considered an adult or not considered an adult and you have to, you know, kind of walk these gray lines of stuff, you know? So now I totally get why people price that way. I'll do um, maybe another video regarding pricing or something like that. Uh, so that way we can talk a little bit more about that. Um, customer complaints, that's one of the other things that I find so difficult to deal with because with my boudoir business, I would get like five to 10 customers a month or something like that. And it was so easy to manage their expectations that if I had a complaint, it was just really easy to, you know, to take care of it, right? So I have a new appreciation for my business, my boudoir business, definitely. Um, but with the Imagine Play, you're dealing with so many personalities every single day. Uh, so, you know, you just can't satisfy everybody. You know, everybody has different expectations of what they want out of Play Place. Um, and some people really love this and some people are just kind of like, I really don't get it. And that's totally fine, but, um, but it's hard. You have to have a very, very thick skin, you know, and, make, and just, you just have to know that, you know, sometimes there's just some people out there that are not gonna be your client and that's totally okay. You know, just do the best you can, keep up with the vision that you want. Um, and the people that will get it are the people that will come and, um, you know, that's, that's the customer you want, you know, with, with boudoir, with anything. Um, what I've learned in my own business for several years is that um, there's a right clientele for you. Um, and then there's other people that might not be your right clientele. And you just want to try to find the right person for you. Um, and I have to try to remind myself that every single day. Um, so future things that we want to keep up on, you know, um, we want to expand the, ima the imaginary area a little bit more. Right now we have lots of toys in there that I feel like are just kind of like filler toys, you know, so, but like I said, like I told you, the castle cost us $10,000. So imagine us wanting to, you know, maybe even put in a fire truck or put in, you know, a spaceship. That's like the, what, the two items that we're like hoping to get in the future. And so imagine the cost of those. So um, you have to bear with us, you know, we're, we're adding new toys every single day, but you know, we have to kind of make sure that, you know, we keep up with our expenses first and foremost, you know, we wanna make sure that we keep the lights on, you know, our employees paid and things like that. Um, and then eventually down the line, you know, we hope to add those 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 few things just to make Imagine Play a little bit better, uh, and to you know make sure that your kids you know really use their imagination to the fullest when they come. So yeah, right. So I've already ran them on for like what 14 minutes now. So hopefully that gives you a little bit more insight of what's going on with Imagine Play and the progress report that we're doing. And I hope to do a little bit more videos in the future so you guys can kind of keep up on all things business and Imagine Play. Um, I'm sure I missed something in these videos, so if you have questions for me, just make sure you ask them. You're, you guys know how to reach me. Everybody, People are messaging me every single day, so um, I will talk to you next time. Bye.